I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All the Mods 9, and today we dive into Nature's Art and Forbidden Arcanus, and we get ourselves an item that allows us to make things completely unbreakable. Hopefully you guys are ready. Now, getting started today, I'm feeling a little bit magical here in All the Mods 9, and well, I want to get to started on this mod called Nature's Aura. Believe it or not, for the most part, we should be able to actually contain this entire mod. Well, aside from the things that need to happen in other dimensions, basically within this single block space right here. So I have devised this little circle and uh, well, and, and also pathing to it, which is ultimately going to be a part of our big magic area. This whole area is going to be all magic, right? And including blood magic and many others, uh, but right here, this is going to house a very special tree. So getting started with Nature's Aura, which is at the top, by the way, of our All the Mods, All the Star chapter two section of the quest book. Um, and it may seem kind of obscure. You're like, well, what exactly do I need to do? We have to get some brilliant fibers and some gold leaf. But outside of that, we just get a book that's, well, kind of locked down until you start to really dabble more into this mod. So I'm gonna try my best to explain how the mechanics work as I am pretty well versed in this mod and have gone through it quite a few times. Now back into the quest book though, interestingly enough, it doesn't really require us to do too much in this mod. Now the uh, the world eyes are not as bad to make as you might think. Um, we just need the environmental eye and then bottle darkness is just going to the end and collecting it, uh, similar to how Batania works, but the environmental eye is a different story. This is a very simple craft and actually one of the early parts of the ritual of the forest, which we're gonna talk about here in a second. Now, one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do to be able to get into Nature's Aura is harvest some leaves. Yeah, we are going to need quite a few of these and this is how we're gonna get started. We've gotta get that very specific gold material. So I'm just going to grab a bunch of leaves and this is going to allow me to craft from the nature's um, a fiber. Um, so let's see, we can search up fiber and this is going to use gold nuggets. So let's make sure we have some gold nuggets here and then some of the leaves and we are going to craft some of this. Oh, also we do need grass as well. So yeah, that's going to be something else we've got to grab. So a lot of shearing early on, lots and lots of shearing. So now with a little bit of grass built up, we can get ourselves some brilliant fibers and these are pretty cool. And all we have to do is just simply click them on a few of the leaves of these different trees. And what it should do is sort of spread throughout the tree. Given some time, it will start to spread. And you're gonna to start to see these little, little particle effects sort of float around. And those are gonna be super important because that is kind of how this mod works, right? Is um, it, it uses aura that is in the, the sort of chunks um, and some of the best places to get started is areas that you see these, these uh, aura blooms. And this means that the area you're in has a, a sufficient amount of aura in it. And if you drain all of the aura by doing certain tasks in this mod, if you, you can drain the life out of the earth, you can start to see some negative effects and all the way up to potential explosions happening. So this right here is kind of what you want to see. These are slowly turning into gold leaves and also spreading throughout the tree, almost like it's infecting the entire tree with gold. I mean, who wouldn't want that? I mean, we've literally got the Midas touch here. Now, once these start growing, like you see here, we can go ahead and start harvesting them and we're gonna start getting these gold leaves. These are very important. And if you have the book in your inventory, you can start to kind of see all of the ins and outs of this mod and there's a lot of nice documentation for everything inside of this book, um, which you do get from the quest. I went ahead and crafted this one ahead of time though. Um, but the problem with this book is everything is sort of locked down. So you have to go step by step, even if something is not maybe necessary for you to uh, progress through, you still have to go through and make sure everything was uh, selected before you can start seeing all of these other locked groups. Um, but I'm gonna try my best to kind of get us through the parts that we absolutely need to do in order to make the Aldemont star. Because at this point, there's not a whole lot from nature's aura that I really wanna get into um, at this particular time, other than just making sure we have enough to be able to craft this thing. And that's gonna be the case for a lot of these mods, even though they have some amazing functionality. Whenever you start a pack like this, 
you almost kind of have to choose the route that you want to go through. Because if you go through Batania, you're going to have a ton of utility from Batania. If you go through uh, Evilcraft, you're going to have a ton of utility from Evilcraft. And then these mods are going to have some very conflicting things. Um, so one mod may do something slightly better, or they may do the thing the exact same. And so you're going to have to kind of pick and choose your battles early game. And in this particular case, when we're just trying to craft the star, I am just going to try my best, for example, for Evilcraft, which I know has tons of cool things. I'm just going to try my best to just craft the things that are absolutely needed. And same goes for Nature Zora and Batania and many of these other mods that are in this list here. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still a lot of fun potential in all of this stuff because I still want to try and automate most of these processes. Now, back to Nature Zora. We're going to need a lot of these leaves here, these golden leaves. Um, and it's going to produce this golden powder. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, there's also another use, and that is to make the wooden stands. And we're going to need eight of these to be exact. So I'm going to have to go up and grab just a few more as we are still kind of waiting for more of these to sort of grow. Eventually, all of these trees will be completely consumed by these leaves, which is kind of nice. Um, and I notice it's not a 100% every time for you to get a golden leaf. So keep that in mind as we start to put this all together. Uh, but I think this should be enough. So there is a multi-block sort of thing that we're going to have to build. Um, so let's take a look at regular logs. And so we just need eight of these. So let's go ahead and craft eight of these wooden stands. Um, and then we're going to have to, we're going to have to use these golden leaves to turn into gold powder. Um, and this gold powder is not something you can get from anything else. So this is a very specific gold powder related to the mod that sort of works like redstone. So in the book, this is how we're going to be doing most of our rituals. So if we can click to visualize this, we should be able to place this down um, in the center here. And now we have sort of an outline. And like I said, this is going to be how we do most of our crafts. And like I said, it's going to fit perfectly in this position. Um, and this is kind of one of the coolest, I think, like ways of crafting items. So this is what I really love about this mod is the way that it works. A tree sort of grows and the tree initiates the craft. Um, but you do have to have this golden powder surrounded uh, by this or surrounded around the sapling. Um, and then this, once the tree grows, it will activate uh, the, the whole setup here. It'll activate the ritual and bam, we will be crafting items. It, it's a really cool mechanic. So now that we have the ritual together, we should be able to start actually working on crafting the eye itself. It just requires the two gold leaves, this in the middle, a spider eye and a gold ingot. So gold ingot, spider eye, let's see, spider, if I can spell, it's hard to type with one hand sometimes. Um, and then the gold leaves, right? And we don't have them just yet, but this will be one of the first things that we should be able to craft and have no problem doing it. By the way, I went ahead and put Fortune 5 on my shears. I don't think that that matters, other than the fact that it might just guarantee that we get one every time. No, we, we still don't get one, and it still doesn't give us any more than just one. So, yeah, I think this is just sort of a time thing, right? Where we just kind of have to wait for leaves to convert. And I'm trying to think of a, a good way to automate this, other than just having a huge forest where we just simply convert all of the leaves in this massive area just to have a big stockpile of them. That's the only thing I can think of. So how do we do this? Well, let's go ahead and line everything up. And this is, like I said, a really cool mechanic. So we're gonna be two leaves for this, so we place here. And then we're gonna need a spider eye and gold. And then in the center to craft this, we just need to grow the tree. And we should be able to use bone mill in order to do this. Just to sort of jumpstart the process. And then when it happens, notice this. This is so cool. So yes, to perform the ritual, it goes into the tree. And this, by the way, the powder will get consumed and the tree, and then we get the item that we need, which is the environmental eye. And then this is going to need to be turned into the world eye. Now this recipe is not too bad. And even getting the bottle darkness shouldn't be all that bad right? Be able to get that bottle of darkness, we should be able to just simply take the bottle and cork, which is this recipe right here, and then go to the end 
And this should work. So we should be able to go to the end and just simply right click in the end. So let's go ahead and go to the end. Here we are. And then right click. By the way, these are also a part of Nature's R. These are the Roses of Oblivion, uh, which do start spawning after you've killed the dragon. So let's see, can we right click? Okay. So it doesn't seem like it's just as simple as right clicking. Okay, maybe it is. We just have to not click the ground. Click the air. <laughs> there we go. And so this will get us bottles of darkness. And honestly, that's pretty much it. And uh, now we just got to figure out, is there a way we can automate this? Oh, I do need to make sure that I grab at least nine of these, by the way, because for each of the, the oblivion shards that we're going to need right here, we are going to need one of these roses of oblivion. And yeah, in reality, we're only going to need to craft up nine of these anyways. So in total, we're going to need 18 world eyes because it costs two each. So is this really, do we really need to automate this? I, I don't think it's going to be too hard for us to do this. This might be something that semi-automation would definitely work for. Now that we're back, something to note here, um, that whenever you actually apply this in your charm, the environmental eye that we've created, it allows you in the top left to sort of see the aura that exists in the area around you. So with it equipped, we should be able to see, and we notice that, well, the bar is about half full. And for me, it's really hard to know exactly if that's good or bad. Um, but I'm assuming that it being low is bad and it being full is good. Um, now, the cool thing that these Roses of Oblivion can do is they should be able to bring up that. Now, we are going to need in stone, I think, to place this on. Um, so let's go ahead and mine this. And then I'm going to place a single piece of in stone right here. I place the Rose of Oblivion on it. And the Rose of Oblivion has this really neat function. Um, if we give it an Eye of Ender, if we just drop that on the ground, it should consume it, I believe. And then it's going to start generating aura and dispersing aura into this area. And that's a good thing. You notice the bar is slowly going up. These things are so powerful for this. And it's going to make this a really nice, pretty area because we're going to start to see these little particle f effects now show up around our base, which is honestly a nice decoration thing, but it's also functional for this mod. Now, when this thing is done generating like that, it's going to turn into a dead bush. <laughs> so we can just go harvest more from the end and uh, we can always bring them back to increase the aura in our area. And notice the aura does tend to go around. Uh, but the cool thing is, is I believe that um, if I remember correctly, the aura will actually just sort of start to spread itself out over these chunks. It's just currently concentrated right here around where this was placed. Now, this right here is what you want to see. Look at all these leaves ready to go. Oh, this is so nice. And we can just simply harvest them. And uh, yeah, I think we should be good. Now, semi-automation was something that I was mentioning. And what I've done here is I've given myself a spot of uh, cyan terracotta that is going to be the exact place that I need to place um, all of this material, my golden powder. Um, so I'm going to need a lot more golden powder, I do believe. But I really only need to split this up like so we are going to need 18 of this and 18 here so let's put 18 here we can hopper these in which if you see is pretty darn cool and then i'll put the spider eyes in and then also the golden ingots so now all i've technically got to do is put the golden powder in my offhand and i should be able to use the wand to place all of the powder down instantly just like that and so all we have to do at this point is grab some saplings right? Some regular oak saplings work the best. And then just some bone meal and make that super simple for crafting these up. And like I said, we are going to need a total of 18. Look at that. Even if it's a larger tree, it's going to work just fine. And as soon as it's done, all we have to do is just simply tap it again and rinse and repeat. And so this is going to be a little bit manual, but that semi automation just makes this process so much more convenient. Honestly, it's about knowing these little tips and tricks that can really help for things like this that really don't need to be fully automated. Now for the last one, here we go. And this will be the 18th one, just like this. Perfect. So um, now that we have this all kind of set up and done, um, there's something interesting that we should be able to do. 
Um, so I'm going to leave this area here, but I was looking at the Oblivion Shard, and the Eternal Stellas, I think, are going to be way harder to obtain than the actual uh, Nature's Aura things. So the reason the this whole setup right here is going to take some time is just the collection of souls. Um, the souls can be kind of daunting, and if we are going to need four per, that's going to really add up. 36 Eternal Stellas, yes. I wonder though, is there a way of automating souls from that mod? I know we're getting on a totally different page here, uh, talking about an entirely different mod, but still, it's something interesting to think about. Now, as far as this now becoming a decoration piece, it's going to eventually turn all of the leaves gold, and that is how it's going to stay. I think it looks kind of cool. So now with all of this set up, we still have some things that we need to do. We still have to craft all of the world eyes. And so, now to get started, uh, yes, we're gonna need 18 spy glasses. And unfortunately, like all of these things, uh, they just, they don't stack. Yep, that's another thing that is kind of a pain. Thankfully though, we don't have to craft too many of these, which I'm, I'm very happy about, honestly. And there we go, perfect. We now have completed this one right here. So two world eyes. Now out of all of the things that we're gonna have to do, this is by far one of the easiest, if not the easiest. So now that we got that part out of the way for the Oblivion, we also need to dabble a little bit in the Eternal Stella section. And I think getting into Forbidden and Arcanus will fit perfectly right in the section next to this. And it's honestly not a hard mod to really get into. Now, if we're gonna start dabbling a little bit in the Forbidden Arcanus and getting ourselves the Eternal Stella, we're gonna need a lot of the resources for that. And I think one of the best ways to sort of jumpstart our production into that mod is by using our good friend, the Chunk Destroyer, but specifically in the overworld. So I've gone to an area that is away from the base, so that way not to uh, to mess with anything, because um, we're gonna be putting a giant hole in the ground. And the reason we have to do it, unfortunately, in the overworld is because I wasn't able to find any of the Forbidden Arcanus uh, ores, or at least when I tried to mine there for it, I didn't really find any, find any of them in that dimension, which seems a bit odd, but that's the case, and there's not really any other place where these modded ores exist. So here we are in the overworld getting this done. So let's place down our chunk destroyer. And by default, it is going to have this area selected, but I'm going to go ahead and start to move these chunks because I, I don't want it mining here. Um, so let's see, let's take this out and then plus one here. Uh, let's see, plus, we're gonna be subtracting, right? Cause I don't, I don't want this right on this. Okay, so that's perfect. Having that sort of expanded out like that. We don't wanna be mining the chunk that we currently have in front of us. Um, and so we should be able to extend this like so. That's gonna extend a few chunks. And the best way to kind of view this is by looking and going, okay, is that far enough? I, I think that's plenty for right now. I can always expand on this later. Um, we're also gonna need to give it some power. So I've given it some power. It's already building off. Uh, I should probably stop this for a moment because I don't want it to start. I didn't, I didn't hit start yet. Um, and then we can set it to chunk by chunk, I think. Um, I want to set this on top. Oh God, it's already generating items. Um, and I've got to set a filter. That's sort of the problem. We haven't even set a filter yet. Why are you going in here? Oh goodness. Okay, so the items we're going to need are these crystals. So we're gonna have this set to allow only, and we are going to start putting in only the things that we really want. So like the runes, and we're gonna want these um, experified ores, um, and then we're also gonna want these Stella pieces. So these are the only thing we want. Everything else, we kind of want it to void off um, and, and not, not generate. Um, so, Let's go ahead and, and use this. I could, I guess, harvest everything, but yeah, I'm, I'm just going to stick with this. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this on and then hit start. And now we should start seeing, okay, block. There we go. Okay, so we need it to be set to block. Okay, so like block everything except for these XP orbs and stuff and the Stellarite. And hopefully it harvests all of the Stellarite and everything. That's what I'm hoping. Um, and then we can use Flint to kind of burn these out. What chaos right now, honestly. Yeah. 
even these items right here. What absolute chaos. Okay, so yes, so now we're starting to see these items build up and that's gonna be important because that's what we want to see. But man, taking out all of this to be able to get to that point is just kind of insane. Some other things we can also add to this list are probably Darkstone. So let's also include Darkstone because we're gonna to wanna to collect a bit of that because that's what's gonna be used to craft up the multi-block. Now, I didn't know this about the Chunk Destroyer, but it just leaves the loot chests. That's so powerful. Now, one of the other main things that we are going to need is this right here. This is the Elderwood Logs. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna need a few of these. These are found pretty primarily in the uh, the dark forest. So you're gonna have to find a dark forest biome. Sort of look around and uh, that's where these bad boys will be at. Now, are these called Edelwood or are they called Elderwood? I, just let me know in the comments. I would love to know. So that way I can quit pronouncing it wrong if I am pronouncing it wrong. Also, that guy's hilarious. Now we're about to diverge off course here. And this is gonna be kind of interesting, but I need phantoms and we're gonna to need to get ourselves a phantom data model. And one of the best ways I think of doing this, since I do tend to sleep and phantoms just never spawn, well, that is to actually travel to a new dimension. And that is going to be with the heart of the deep that we got from killing the warden. We can then travel back to the deep dark and we can use this to activate the portal. So we do have to clear away all of this stuff that is nearby. So all of this skulk vein, let's get it off of here. And then all we have to do is simply use the heart on the portal. And we have now activated, <laughs> activated the portal. Yes, this is a really cool dimension. And if we go in here, it is going to spawn us in a world that is incredibly dark. So this is it without night vision but well, this is it with night vision and notice there are phantoms that are all over the place and also other creepy things that i just want to ignore but for right now i'm gonna get my data model and then we need to start you know chomping away at them that way we can yeah, and it shouldn't even take very long we should be able to go through these phantoms in no time at all yeah this is this is interesting. And then I'll just be able to teleport back home whenever I'm done. Also try my best to fly around and not spawn wardens because yes, wardens will spawn here. But these guys, oh, just give me the heebie-jeebies. Now, if you're wondering what mod this is from, this is from the deeper dark mod. And yeah, it is, it is definitely deeper and darker. I mean, who would have thought that magic would be so destructive? Yeah, as we're just looking for these very particular ores. Oh boy, what have I done? It's still going. Oh no, it's even worse. I realize we're actually in a rainforest and I am just completely annihilating an entire rainforest. Oh no, that's the worst. I mean, but hey, look, it's doing a pretty good job. We have 85 Stellarite pieces. I think this is more Stellarite than I've ever had in any mod pack. Now, in my opinion, the hardest part about building the altar for Forbidden Arcanus is just crafting all of the different like slabs and in polished dark stone that you're going to need. All of these different dark stone types are honestly the hardest part. But if you get the auto crafting set up for them, it's not so bad. Now, just following through the quest line makes this really, really nice and simple. Uh, but we are going to need arcane dust, Mundabitor, and then we're going to make the Diorum, I believe. And this actually just uses the, all those ingredients with some gold. Um, and I believe there's also a way that you could potentially farm these nuggets off of a plant, making these seeds right here. Um, and yeah, you, could, you should be able to farm these seeds. Um, but I'm not super worried about it right now because we can easily craft all of these things. But that leads us into the Hephaestus Forge. And that is going to require this setup right here, which is actually a 9x9. Nine nine, and I have it laid out just perfect right here. Now in the center here, we're gonna be utilizing some arcane chiseled polished dark stone, it's a mouthful, and then chiseled arcane polished dark stone. Um, and then it's gonna go in a pattern just like this with the um, chiseled arcane going right here in the center. And then on all of the sides is also where this is going to go. Um, and this is sort of the basis of the whole setup. And then all we gotta do is place down some dark stone pedestals that go right here. And that nearly completes the entire setup. But we're missing one fundamental part, and that is creating it. And so we're going to need a smithing table and some of that Mundabeater dust. 
and uh, we place this down and we should be able to just right click on here. Shift right click, right? Or punch. Uh, oh, wait, we need the hammer. Now, all we need to be able to set this up is by placing these chiseled arcane polished dark stone right here. And then in the center is going to be the arcane uh, chiseled polished dark stone. And then these are also going to go in sort of the corners here of this setup. And what we should end up with is the ability to place down some pedestals. And these pedestals can go right here, just like so. Um, and uh, I don't know if we actually need to have the pedestals in order to generate it. Let's go ahead and try it out at first. So the way you actually generate this is by placing a smithing table down in the center and shift right clicking. And when you do that, you get yourself a Hephaestus Forge. Interesting to note, I think you have to do this before you place down the pedestals, uh, but now we can place down our pedestals and this is how we're gonna interact with this build. Now there's a couple of things that we need to note and that is the Ariel uh, stuff right here, which we do get some bottles as a reward, but there's actually a way we can passively generate that. Then we have our souls, which will come from a soul extractor. Um, and we're also going to need some other things. And we also need to manage blood and then also experience, which comes from experience bottles. The blood comes from a different source, which is kind of interesting. And you do have to kind of collect it, which can be a little bit of a pain. But you're going to need a mystical dagger. And this requires you to have smelted down some of the, the Elderwood logs. And then you need a dark rune. Yeah, which, I mean, honestly, all of this stuff is not too bad to make. Now, before we get super fancy and start crafting things up, let's generate passively this Ariel right here. Um, and I hope I'm saying that right. But to do this, we are going to make some obelisk. I'm going to make two of them. And we need this arcane polish. And we right click. And that will generate this obelisk. Kind of cool. And this will now slowly start to fill up. And I think the more of these you have around this, uh, the better off you are. And you should be able to pick these back up. So, and they will take on the crystal form and then you just place them down as needed. Now that we got that part under control, let's talk about how we actually get the blood. So we're gonna to need to make these test tubes, which do use the runes and then make the mystical dagger, which I've already got set up. It's all of the ingredients that we've already had. Um, the obsidian ingots, these are just basically iron surrounded by our, our, yeah, iron around some obsidian that's melted. So I went ahead and enchanted this. And then also I have a soul extractor, which is also pretty cheap to make. And these are how we're gonna get souls and also blood. So it's the perfect time. Let's see, I don't know if it's just from attacking the mob. Yes, the uh, attacking the mob, just attacking it, causes our blood vial to fill up, fill up. And that's exactly what we're gonna want. So let's turn on the lights. And we're gonna want to fill up these blood vials. And yeah, using this dagger, I believe specifically, is what we're gonna have to do. Believe it or not, there's a lot of mechanics for some reason in modded Minecraft that utilize like blood collection. I don't know what this is all about, but yeah, it's definitely a thing. Now, when it comes to soul farming, it's a little bit different. There's souls that you might discover floating around, uh, but one of the best ways is to just simply place down or go to the nether and just place down some soul sand and just use this to extract the souls from it and just holding down right click. Pretty simple, as you can see right here. And that is going to generate these little souls. And that's one of the currencies that we're going to need um, to not only upgrade the uh, the forge initially, but this is like one of the main parts, right? So we put the souls in here, they fill up, right? And we're going to have more storage later on. Um, and then the blood from the test tube goes in the blood. And then we need bottles of enchanting for the bottles of enchanting for the experience bar. And that's basically it. Um, so we need to get it to a certain point where we're going to need to upgrade this and it is going to require some certain items to upgrade our forge. Thankfully though, it's not too difficult to do. So if we take a look at the forge from Hephaestus, we can see there's different tiers like this. Um, so we just need to place down some spawner shards. We have plenty of them. We need these required items down here. So we need at least 6,000 blood zero experience in this case and we need some souls and some of that 500 Ariel at least built up and then we're going to use a lot utilize all the pedestals with this that'll take us to tier two and we need to get to tier three so we need just a few more of these items to get there but let me show you how to actually upgrade this so now I have all of the items in here and this is how we're going to upgrade we need to make sure we are meeting our requirements that are down here for the upgrade 
And all we have to do is place the item in the center in order to do the upgrade and then click it with a hammer. And as soon as we're ready to go, it will then activate. We'll see that it is ready to go by this animation at the bottom, which is so cool, by the way. This mod has come a long way over the last few years. It is quite amazing to see what this is. This is now what's being done with this mod. But here we go. Takes it takes a little bit of time, apparently. Look at that. We could probably speed this up, but I wouldn't want to. That's so cool. And now we have a Hephaestus Forge tier two. And uh, to be able to upgrade it to the next tier, it is going to require a bit more. It looks like 900 blood instead of 600. 50 souls need to be extracted to be able to upgrade to the tier three and a hundred of the Ariel. I will say soul extracting is a pretty mind numbing task. <laughs> it's now time to get this bad boy up to tier three. And here we go, decorum. We're gonna get these all in here, more of the arcane on top of that. And then last but not least this inside, and then it's ready to be upgraded to the next tier, which is gonna be tier three. And this is where we have now the ability to make this, uh, th all of the eternal Stellas. And I'm, we're going to need quite a few of them, right? So to make nine stars, we are going to need quite a few eternal Stellas. Four times nine, oh man, 36 of them. And I don't know how many souls, oh gosh, that was so scary. I don't know how many souls these all require, but this right here, this can now hold up to 100 souls. And how much does an Eternal Stella actually cost? So it does cost one soul, thankfully, and actually not a lot. So it just requires the blood, not even experience. So actually, these are pretty easy to make. So crafting up the Eternal Stella should be a cakewalk now. So all we need is the materials that we gathered up with a diamond in the center. And then to craft it, we should be able to activate, right? Or is it a little bit different? Um, so this is gonna require the blood, the one soul, and then the Ariel, Ariel. So I think we're just missing the Ariel to be able to craft this because it needs 82, but I did place four of these down to make it faster. There we go. So now if you're having issues, it's probably because you're out of something. So now we should be able to just simply click and that's going to craft an internal Stella. And we've got to do this apparently 36 times in order to technically make nine stars, which is going to allow us to automate the star. This is a lot, that's a lot, but at least we now have it out of the way and we can always come back to this to craft. And um, I, this might be actually automatable with some modular routers to, to at least do the craft, but gathering up the resources, that is not going to be that easily done. Now, why do we want this thing? Well, the Eternal Stella allows us to turn any item now into an unbreakable item. It can also repair things, but its main use is to make it eternal, like forever, absolutely forever. So any item that this can be used on, uh, so any item that has a durability can be made to no longer have a durability of any kind, which is insanely powerful for some items like specifically items that can be used for automation in machines. So today we have effectively made everything needed to actually craft this thing right here, the Oblivion Shard. And I feel pretty happy about that. We've effectively allowed ourselves to craft one of the several components of the star. That is super powerful. And we are now on track on our journey, like even the beginning. We are now led all the way through. Everything is sort of complete except for the sniffer down here, but everything's sort of complete up to the Aldermod star over here, allowing us to now start working heavily on all of these individual components that are gonna require us to get into a ton more from mods, but this is just the start. So if you guys are enjoying my journey through all the mods nine, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also give this video a huge thumbs up. That really does go a long way and also keeps my motivation up, which I absolutely need from time to time. And without further ado, if you have any suggestions or comments, please let me know down in the comment section below, as that really does help me out. If you have any suggestions on ways we can automate this stuff, I would love to hear from you guys. And uh, we may it may get implemented in a future episode, so definitely be sure to, to let me know. And it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. 
And that amazing thanks, by the way, is going to go out to Hifarin. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord and becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. And guys, I thank you so, so very much. Hope you enjoyed. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. Bye.